I like the, uh, the what, I forget what the word is, when you've kind of got two different uh, type, time signatures or moving at the same time and they kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just they, they don't line up, but then at some points they do. That's always cool. So the, the lyrics I noticed right away, I, I think the lyrics are the most graspable right so far on the album, Up the Chain it's called, and I just right away kind of grasp that the lyrics are about a point of view, hopefully not this, not the actual point of view of the singer in the band or whatever. It's sort of uh, stepping on people in order to get up the chain, you know, to get up and, and to get yourself successful. And your empathy is a disease, holy mackerel. That's a despicable point of view, really despicable. Uh, it's made you weak, be more like me. Hmm. Let's move on to the next track. Backy guitar, that's nice. The bass has such a nice texture. Nice chords. I really enjoy the instrumental sections a lot in this band.
Okay. That was an entirely instrumental song. Really loved that. Guys, uh, Wheel, please do as many instrumentals as you like, because I really like your instrumental aspect of your band. Like, that was really beautiful. This is a nice bass line. So you're hovering on that, that C and then... Oh, I'd have to hear it again. Let's go on to the next tune. Yeah, this album, I can tell, let me pause this here, this band, as I listen to this song especially, I can't, I can't, as a songwriter, I have, a, I'm having a hard time relating to this, to these guys, and what they're writing, because uh, it's so, it's, it's so alien, it's alien to what I write, like, like I, for me, it's all about the melody, and then everything kind of, uh, or riffs, or riffs, this is, 
there's not a lot of melody in that last song, but there is definitely riffs going on there, and I love the riffs. And I mean, I love the musicianship and everything, but uh, the riffs uh, are about the melody. There was nothing really to grab on there. It was just a lot of riffing, and which is kind of like Led Zeppelin-ish, you know? Maybe it's a bit of the blues kind of feel to it, This at, at the very root of it. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. A bit of a, kind of the blues, because the blues are not really always melody-based, are they? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment below if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, you know, the blues are sort of like... It's sort of like the vocals themselves are riffing over top of the riff, you know, so 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 it's not it's not really a composed melody. I mean, uh, the only melody I can pick out just from memory of hearing it just now, da 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 da. You know, it's not really uh, too substantial as far as I'm concerned, as far as a melody goes. Uh, it's more like a riff, you know. It's more like just riffing, riffing. Unlike the very first song on this album, uh, I don't think I've heard anything else uh, on this album so far that's sort of like really commercially viable and of course uh that's probably the intention actually they probably picked picked one song because you know to me it's like a, a doormat song uh, doormat's a bad analogy it's a sort of um, a bridge song you know that welcomes people in uh or you know it's a, a, a pretty frontage on on a house or something sort of entices you to enter uh pop songs you know pop music it's it, Anything, the more pop it is, the more accessible it is, right? To the, to the lesser musicians in our, our planet. So anyways, uh, very riffy. I really like the m melodic stuff. I like it when they were actually just doing the instrumentals. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I think this is the last track. I think so. We're going to just go ahead and keep playing. Of course, my opinions will change. I mean, this is the first time listening to an album. I'm sure you all had that experience. Leave a comment below if you have where you listen to an album the first time you hated it. I'm not saying I hated this one at all, but you hated an album and then you ended up, you know, because you'd bought it. This is back in the old days and you have to go buy albums and commit to something. And then you listen to it again and then you realize, yeah, yeah, I needed to grow into this album and realize how great it was. And then you love it for the rest of your life.
is a really cool part. That ending there reminded me a little of, um, by the way, that was a fantastic way to finish an album. That was a really strong finish. Uh, I love it when an album finishes either on a really powerful note or a really s s even a soft kind of farewell or something, you know. A nice close to an album is a worthy, a worthy achievement. So I feel like I can't say a lot about this album because I really feel like it's so, it's a, it's a bit dense for me as far as figuring out the melodies, following the melodies, and latching on to um, uh, all of the different riffs that are going on. And this is, it's very complex, complex, complicated, complex. It's gonna need uh, further listening. Like I'm gonna have to listen to repeat listening. Of course, Jen, thank you very much for this album. You gave me this album. It's really modern progressive sound, which is very uh, dense, very, you know, like fudge 
cake or something you know there's so much there there are moments where there's breathing and i really like that actually in the album there are moments that are much more breathy and breathing and relaxed and uh, i think the album could have used a little more of that to be just to, to for my preference but that's just me right there's a lot there to digest that goes right along with that metaphor that it's dense certainly one of my first impressions is fantastic production like this beautifully recorded everything sounds great it was produced by james lascelles and will the music was by will and the lyrics were by james and uh, james is the vocalist guitarist ronnie sepenin is the guitarist another guitarist miko meta is the bass player santeri saxala is the drums and they had some guest musicians like the bongo we heard uh and some other additional uh, percussion and a bit of synthesizers by James Lascelles. It looks like the recording was done by all of them. Probably they did some recording at home and then uh, in their home studios. And then, of course, they would have the drums, I'm sure, in a proper studio because you could never get that kind of a quality sound in a, in a basement or something. So recorded at Sonic Pump Studios... Jiffle Music, Oi, and Cassini Studios in Finland. So congratulations, all of my friends in Finland, helping this band make this great album. And looking forward to exploring it more. So that's Moving Backwards. Wheel. So that's my react. And Jen, thanks again for supporting. If you, if you want to be a sponsor to get an album reacted to, join through my Patreon, or you can do one off through PayPal. Links both down in the description. Spiraling on it, Steen. Talk to you all later.